Can I ask everybody who loves Duluka to stand up? Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. We have over sat down. Let's have some little fun. Your handkerchief in your hand. Wait, if you are, wait, DJ, wait, wait. If you are sitting down, I'll come and carry you by my out. The bouncers, please, DJ, we go. Wait, wait. Yeah, let's sit down. Hello. Arua, how are you? How are we doing? Please, ladies, be nice to the man who has been buying beers for you. Give your man a kiss immediately. You have drunk over four bottles and you're still pretending like it's not yet much. Come on, there are these ones on the table. You have a bottle of wine. You've not even given that guy a hug. Please, do it right now. Woo. Uh, so the two of you, you are lesbians. We are here suffering. You are giving that woman our hug. Madam, I've seen you. I've seen you. You first repeat what you did again. Let me tell you, ever since the government passed that law, these things of, ah, oh, darling, it's no longer there. It is only applicable to us. Eh? Amen, but Arua, Arua, I love you guys so much, man. If you're here, just clap for yourself, man. See, I've been moving around the world, but I want to bring you my journey from where I come from. I come from a poor place in, my, in uh, Oyam Sub County. I mean, hey, it's a district now. <laughs> <laughs> it has only been a sub county for so long that we got youth, even when they give us a city, a city status, we still call it Oyam. Anyway, where I come from, we have suffered of so many things. One, poverty. Two, war. Three, Girls from there don't have nyash. I was happy when I came here. The ones here have nyash. <laughs> Listen, our, I grew up in a poor family and it has been one of the, the most painful things. One day they kidnapped me from the village. I think a witch doctor had sent these guys to look for someone for a sacrifice. They kidnapped me, but along the way, I managed to bargain with them. I said, guys, don't kill. Kindly call my father. He's going to be able to save me. Give you whatever amount of money you need. This guy's placed a call to my father. Said, ah, Mr. Okot, we, have the kid we are the kidnappers. We have your son in custody. All we want from you is 10 million Uganda shillings. On the mention of 10 million, my father said, wait, 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 you people, is it 10,000? 10 million. They said, yeah, we, you heard us when we say 10 million. I said, eh, where do they get that money from? <laughs> I've never seen it. They said, you are joking with us. We'll kill your son. They said, ah, there's no problem. You kill, you bring me the balance. Let it be 9 million point five. Remember, these guys thought my father was joking. They took me and kept me for two days. After two days, they thought when they call, my father will not take their call serious. They even increased the stake from 10 million to 15. Call my father, hey, Mr. Court, we, we still have your son, by the way, we have not killed him. But we are going to kill him without any sympathy. If you don't yield to our demand. He said, what is your demand? He said, we want 15 million. He said, let me first talk to the boy if you are sure he's there. They put me on the phone. He asked me, cash. I said, daddy, these people have kept me here. They are going to kill me. He said, no, no, relax, relax. We know these people, how they work. Have they given you food? I said, yeah, yesterday they gave me porridge. He said, oh, you continue staying there. We said hungry, by the way. 
Come on, those guys kept me for one week until they asked for my opinion. Do you want us to go and kill your father? <laughs> I joined them. Life was hard. Meanwhile, I grew up in the war. I told you my time was the worst time to be in Laos sub-region. Joseph Cohen was killing everything from pussycat, god skull, human being, anything. And by the way, you needed not to even see them. You just hear Cohen, you first take off. Your grandmother follows you the next morning. Everyone comes one by one. You see your grandmother at around 10. Hey, there's the people yesterday came so serious. I hope they have not killed anyone. As you are there, then you see your small brother also coming. Grandma, yesterday you people left me. Uh, what time did we have to take care of you? <laughs> what day? They attacked us, everybody then, including me. Members, we, we had a boy. We had, my, my mother had given birth to her last born, James. James was only one year and eight months. He had just learned how to walk. Members, this force that the soldiers, the rebels came with, even you, you would not look for your child. My mother took off. We all took off. As I was running in the bush, suddenly told me, please, the little boy has remained. You go back. I found some little courage to go and pick James. As I was going, I just had gunshot. I said, ah, it's over. <laughs> Let the boy die. If he's dying, they can make the thing in two minutes. <laughs> Man, I took off. The next day, in the morning, people all came back at around 10, 11, our father came. He said that those people yesterday, it was terrible. <sighs> you make tea. As they are making tea, they say, hey, where is the baby? <laughs> That was two hours, two hours later. Where's the baby? They said, eh, we left him in the house. You check in the house, they checked. James was not there. Remember, Scooby the boy had climbed the ceiling board. <laughs> Let me tell you, the rebel, the, yo, see, I have been watching. I don't know, Europeans are stupid. Listen, if you really grew up in the times of war, then you know that if you look at the Russia-Ukraine war, Russia-Ukraine war, Israeli and over Palestinian, theirs is called war. The one that happened in northern Uganda is called war. <laughs> Nobody has your time. I was watching a documentary. I was watching a documentary. UN, United Nations, had sent their team to Ukraine to pick the Ukrainians, or the Ukrainians, eh, to pick them, evacuate them, because Russia had issued that in the next 10 minutes, members, for us, we will get the alert in two days that they are coming. This was, they were given an alert that in the next 10 minutes, Russia is throwing a missile. The plane was there, they were loading people. Everyone was running. You know, Bazungus, even when they are busy, they still are <laughs> lazy. Everyone entered the plane. They said it is now two minutes. I saw one woman crying out of the plane. Please allow me. We can't leave Johnny. We, we can't leave Johnny. He's been a member of the family. Let me pick Johnny. They granted her the permission. I saw the woman running. I said, hey, Johnny must be important. Only to see it was a pussy cat. Oh, Johnny, they can't kill you here. They can't kill you. <laughs> Let me tell you, for us, even our pussy cat died without us noticing. I don't know whether it is the LRA that abducted him. <laughs> Bazungus are stupid, man. Very stupid. There are things that Bazungus do that I see and I ask myself, I said, do these people really know what happens here? But no, there, there are things that Bazungus have that we don't have. I notice Bazungus have patience and we don't have patience. True or false? Okay, if okay, men don't ask. Ladies, do African men have patience or not? You see, they are very active shouting. No, these are the ones you take your, your man takes you to the room immediately is on your shirt. No patience. He doesn't even want to hear your stories. 
Listen, Bosungus have patience. Yesterday, I was at UBA Bank, Gulu Branch. That's where I keep all the money that you people give me. <laughs> yeah. In case you've ever given. <laughs> so I was at the bank and I wanted to just pick 200,000, send at least 100 to money and 100 kids me. I went nine in the morning. I checked the ATM. There was no network. I went to the counter. There was no network. I sat down and I said, no, I'm waiting for this network. Remember, a Muzungu walks in. That's when I learned that Bazungus are patient. The Muzungu walks in, checks at the uh, ATM. There is, there is no network. She moves to the counter. There's no network. She turns and goes back without asking anyone what is wrong with the network. Me, I was sitting there and said, I'm waiting for this network. If you people, <laughs> if you people don't have network, we will wait for it. Another gentleman came. This one was from Papo. A very serious farmer you could even see. He came, he checked. No network. He went to the counter, no network. He shouted, manager. The man asked him, hey, sir, may I help you? No, no, this is not time for help. My money. The manager told him, please, sir, would you sit down? We can first serve you water or something, and we can talk about this. Hey, can't look a pig and can go and pee. First bring the water. <laughs> so as we sat, we were two of us, two impatient Africans. This woman who came, the bazoo, came back again, went to the ATM. She left there, smiling, walked to the counter and asked the tailor, what is wrong with the network? When do you think the network is going to come? I need some money. The tailor asked, how much do you need? I wanted to withdraw like $1,500. I said, eh, it is dollars that this woman has all this patient. <laughs> Members, my stupid African brain told me cash. The moment is now, you also shout. I said, manager, what is wrong with this network? I want money. Said uh, you, you first come here. I went. He said, How much do you want? I said, oh, the, How much is not important. It is money. The one I want is Uganda shillings. I don't care about dollar or pound. I want Uganda shillings. Say, Yes, we know you are Uganda. How much Uganda shillings? I said, 200,000. He said, You go and sit. I walked back. You know, we Africans are always motivated. If your friend does something, the other one gets up. So this farmer also stood up. Said, manager, you people are playing. This is your style of stealing people. I want money. They said, how much do you want? So I, I'd come to buy something at Guru Main Market. But I'm left with only 6,000. <laughs> the manager shouted, the two of you get down. <laughs> Don't have the right to make noise here. This is $1,500. The woman is patient, quiet, and you are there making. Get out. Security. Yeah. I came here without money. If you people see me in the bar, please support the asset. <laughs> but yeah, there, there, are things, there are things that I love about whites. Please, I have been hearing everybody here talking about Nyash. Yes, yes. People, please, let us not put these guys on pressure too much. Sometimes it is not their, it's not their will that they don't have nyash. I'm speaking on behalf of those who don't have nyash. You cannot clap for me. And now let me work on you. Men, please, if you see a girl who doesn't have nyash, eh, please support the asshole. She's going through a lot. She needs emotional support. But meanwhile, let me tell you, you know, if you don't have yash, the disadvantage is too much. But Zungus, okay, let me, let, me, let me ask this in a very calm tone. We have seen Bazungus marry African ladies, right? Like they have married from Arua, Gulu, where? Tell me where. Or which sub-county, or district, or city in the entire Ugandan that you've seen a Muzungu marrying somebody without Nyash. 
Let me tell you a secret. Bazungus love people with Why? Because during football time, during action, they want something they can oil and slap. Okay, if okay, if you don't have, just tell me where should the muzungu slap? Your cheeks or your head? <laughs> or, or you want the muzungu to slap your back? <laughs> Ben dropped. <laughs> eh? But meanwhile, let me tell you, that thing of slapping, we Africans love copying things from Bazoom. Please, that thing of slapping is not, is not for us. African men, you guys here, here, the ring as I'm seeing here, don't slap. You are always, you see, I, the ringers are like langis. You see, langis, you don't slap. You slap a woman, a lonely woman, poor. Uh -uh, no, 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 Has it become a war? <laughs> Why are you fighting? I thought you brought me here to show me love. Ah, uh -uh, you people laugh fast. I'm about to leave. <laughs> hey, madam, you are not laughing. You'll explain to me why you are not laughing. You think I'm not funny? Listen, let me tell you. I have gone to South Sudan. Hey, do we have South Sudanese here? Yeah. I just came back from South Sudan two days ago. Please, South Sudanese, shukran, shukran, shukran. I call it for you. Hey, listen, please clap for all the South Sudanese here. I keep asking myself why the South Sudanese in Uganda don't look like the ones in Juba. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, the other side, you see, Nash, here we are all together. <laughs> What is wrong? TT? What's the problem? Listen, listen. Listen, I love South Sudan with all my heart. Okay? Why? Because I went there at the immigration and I told them I'm a Ugandan. They checked my passport. The guy said, You must be fooling us. I said, How? He said, Which Ugandan has that? I, I told him, I said, Yes, uh, I, I am a refugee living in Uganda. They allowed, I went to Juba. They, I performed, I had the best show of my life. Man, you people clap for South Sudan. Those people love comedy. While performing, somebody just gets up and brings money. Comes with a bag, madam. Madam, first bring your bag which has money. Okay, 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 listen. No, I, I know you people already heard me saying I'm broke. I am not taking your money. Just bring, this is for the joke only. Madam, that bag has money? Yes? No, no, no. If, if it has served yet, don't bring. I want the one that has money. Okay. Here's the thing. Those people, when they're showing love to a comedian, somebody comes with the entire bag. And then, no, it is not dollars always. It's pounds. <laughs> you, you are not a Sudanese. They come. And then somebody just opens the bag for you. And he pours the money. And he goes, you're mad. You're funny. <laughs> you're funny. One person came and poured money. Immediately I ended my performance. I called my mother, I said, pack your things, we are leaving now. <laughs> Call the broker in Kampala and tell them we need to learn at the house. I was seeing the money, full, full of a box. I came back to a Lego. I said, cash, this money, if you go, Ugandans are thief. They'll kill you. Change this money to Uganda shillings, it'll be. I went, I said, boss, change this, how much? The guy changed the counter, he brought even a machine, the machine got spoiled, he used somebody's saliva to count. Until they finished, took them three hours to finish counting. The next few minutes I asked him, I said, huh, so will I have it in dollars or Uganda shillings? He said, no, this one, uh, no, 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 you, you're, you're abusing dollars, no, no, Uganda shillings. I said, Uganda shillings, hey, okay, how much? How much? He said, this one, whole, plus this tomorrow, this is 13,000 Uganda shillings. I said, no, 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 no. These are things. I said, these are robbers. These are, I even started shouting, police, 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 robbers, robbers. I carried my money. I went to another forex. Said, cash, be careful. These Lego people are thieves. I went to another forex. Dropped the money. I told the guy, I said, count when. Count where if you don't have a machine, we can hire. The guy counted. 
I asked him, I said, how much in Uganda shillings? The guy said, this, you know, the economy, there's fluctuation here and there. Uh, this one, if I am to be fair to you, I am giving you 10,000 Uganda shillings. I told him, I said, you are joking. He said, well, you come for yourself and we, we do the mathematics. He started counting. Members, the guy had actually given me more by 2,000. It was 8,500. <laughs> Immediately, I called my mother. I said, have you already called the broker? Like, yeah, he's already looking for the house. I said, about mission, about mission. <laughs> Members, I hate it when you fans put us entertainers on pressure. The fans in Gulu nearly killed my career. I went to Rwanda, I performed. I went to Juba, they saw the money, they gave me a performed. When I came back to Guru, they said, oh, Wakabi, you have gone international. You are a superstar. But Wakabi, why are you shaming us? Why are you still walking on foot? Please, uplift your status. See, Cliff the drunk is your friend. Eric Omoni, you and him eat me and you are together. You are good friend. These people will not be happy to see you walking. Buy a car. Members, the pressure hit me. From the bottom of my heart, I said, Cash, you know you are poor. But it is always okay to understand prices of things. <laughs> Members, I had my three million Uganda shilling. Three! Saved. I went, I withdrew the money. Pressure took me to Nakawa Kamoto. Pressure took me to Nakawa Motopon. I went to the bone. There's a way if you're poor, everything you see is nice. <laughs> My boss, I saw a V8 packed like this white. I said, this one, according to my long legs, this one. How much? The guy said, this one. Are you sure you are the one who wants this? I said, yeah, you. This one, how much? He said, this one is a brand new. We just imported from Japan. I said, you're wasting time. Whether you brought from China or how much? He said 800 million. I said, no, 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 leave that one. <laughs> Let us go to things that Ugandans can afford. <laughs> Members, I went to a corner. There was Subaru. You know, if, meanwhile, I don't know what happened, but Northern Nazi love Subaru. When I Subaru Legacy, Sport, what? Eh, they love Subaru. When I saw it, I said, Cash, you do a lot of shows and you need a car with speed. The taboo. Boah! When you pass, the fans will see that he has finally bought a car. I said, this one here, this Subaru Legacy, how much? The guy said, this one, um, it's a second hand. Meanwhile, it's driven by I said, whether it is a man who drove it well, how much? He said, this one we are giving at, at 35 million. I said, 35? Uh, yeah, I said, uh, let's leave. <laughs> we went to the last corner. Every Ugandan has what we call last resort. Something told me, cash, you know the economy. Fuel is expensive. You ask for a car that understands the economy. I remember an advert that I saw on NTV Uganda saying somebody used half a liter from Kampala to Entebbe and he came back to Kampala using Vicks. I said, this one, this one, this one, this is the car. How much? How much I want this one? The guy said, this one, it is, it is brand new, imported from Japan. I said, even it's from Rwanda. This one, I know. I want this one. How much? The guy told me, this one, it is just Bay, you know, Bay, okay? it, we're giving us 17 million. I said, this small wheelbarrow. <laughs> the guy at the bone got tired. He called me aside. He said, young man, first come. Did you come prepared or you have just come? I said, anyhow, I have come. How best can you help a brother to drive? And I said, you said how much do you have? I said, uh, I, I have just walked to understand the prices of these things. But I told myself, if I get the one I want, I'll deposit tomorrow and come back with the money. He said, ah, yes, so the deposit is how much? 
I said, uh, bro, I had worked with three, three million cash. I don't know who told Ugandans that if you had cash, the money looks big. <laughs> I told the guy, I have three million cash. He said, you have three million? You came with it? I said, yeah. He held my hand. He said, you come, come. Members, we walk, we pass the bond. As we were moving, I saw Mukasa other way. I said, the car is that side. He said, no, 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 no. You said three million. I said, yeah. We moved. And then he said, you bend down a little. I bent down. He said, you see that wheelbar? It's made from Japan. It's three million. Take it for, for good. It will help you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.